disturbing trend that's happening in cities across the state and the country, but also in California, Oakland, where burglars opened fire on police officers in at least two incidents over the weekend. Out front with me now is Oakland Police Chief Leron Armstrong. He's been with the department 22 years. Chief, thanks for being here. What is, from what you can, what you've been able to gather, behind and driving this trend of smash and grabs in your city and elsewhere? We really believe it's organized crime. It really is groups of individuals that are coming together uh, to commit these crimes in city th throughout the Bay Area and throughout our nation. Uh, we've seen groups as large as 100 to 200 people come into our city in vehicle caravans, armed, and, and attempting to take over businesses and loot those businesses. I mean, are you making headway in arresting any of these people when you're talking about that many people involved? Yeah, arrests have been made both in Oakland and other cities. We are working together to connect these crimes. They, it's occurred throughout the Bay Area. San Francisco and Walnut Creek and other cities have been impacted by these groups. We know uh, that they didn't just uh, impact one city, that this is a collective group of people who have impacted multiple cities. So our district attorneys are all working together to levy charges against the people that have been arrested so far. Chief, we spoke to the mayor earlier this week, Mayor Boakland, and she was very candid and clear and says part of the problem is that you don't have enough police on the force. I want to play for you what the mayor told me. Let me be clear. Oakland needs more police. We have been impacted by staffing reductions. COVID interrupted our recruitment and training processes, and the defund rhetoric is challenging our ability to attract and retain recruits and we are going to be staffing up that is a necessity at this moment where we are with our crime in this season chief i've heard you say very similar but that that doesn't there doesn't seem to be a quick fix to what is an urgent problem you need to hire you need to recruit you need to train you've got a crisis right now so what do you do until then well, I think we're asking a lot of our police officers that are still here on the force. Uh, they are stepping up in a tremendous way, and we really appreciate that. We also are trying to lean on our federal and state partners as well to help us uh, during this very difficult time. But also, we're really drawing our, our community to be more of a partner right now in this moment where crime has been something that has been out of control for us. And so we're trying to manage it uh, uh, through a multi strong effect, which includes violence prevention and violence interruption, but it's really difficult in this moment. That's understandable. You know, Chief, while I have you, I do want to ask you about the tragic school shooting in Michigan, because this type of violence hits very close to home for you. Your older brother, Andre, I was reading, was shot and killed at his high school when you were young. You were just a teenager as well. As an officer and, and someone who knows this pain, is there anything you would say to the now four families in Michigan who've lost their young kids so tragically? Well, my condolences go out to the family. I've been watching the story, and like you said, it definitely hits home for me because I understand how tragic that is for all of those families that have been impacted. Uh, I, I just really say that this is a long process, uh, that there's so much hurt and pain that comes along with these incidents. And I just think we as a country have to begin to look at laws around uh, these firearms, uh, the, the, you know, the risk that it poses to our young people, uh, to our community is just so devastating. And so for me, it's something that I carry with me uh, as, a, as somebody who's lost someone for the rest of my life. And I know that these things, uh, you know, that they hurt for a long time, but, but really I feel sorry for the community and I know that they are now healing and I, our, our prayers go out to them and their families. And a very long, long process of healing ahead. Chief, thank you so much.